Hi, welcome back to Lipper's Fun Flows Insight Report. I'm Jeff Turnahoy. For the week ended June 17, 2015, we saw widespread outflows across mutual funds this week, while ETF investors had a more positive view about equity funds. Let's take a look at our macro groups and see where, what happened. Well, as you can see, it's a sea of red here with outflows across all mutual fund macro groups, equity funds with uh, losses of about $900 million in assets, taxable bond funds uh, had one of their worst weeks in a while, $3.4 billion pulled from them, municipal bond funds had yet another out week, outflow week, while money market funds saw about $10 billion in outflows. Well, there was a lot on investors' minds this week, particularly when it came to equity and treasury markets, with what's going on in Greece and whether we're likely to see a true Grexit or maybe a default, or will the ACB be able to kick the can down the road along with the rest of the Troika and let uh, Greece kind of figure things out on their own? It leaves a lot of questions to be answered, and right now investors aren't too sure that they're going to find a good solution anytime soon. This is keeping a lot of activity on the sidelines, maybe adding a bit of a sour note to the market, although technology stocks did perk up this week as the NASDAQ approached some new highs. Well, let's take a look at equity mutual funds and see what happened with them. Again, they had outflows. This is the fourth week in a row of outflows for equity mutual funds with the Greek debt hanging over their heads, uh, signs of overheating in China's stock market. It doesn't leave investors with a good feeling about equities right now, so it's kind of a sentiment play. $900 million in outflows, not all that much, although we've seen 11 out of the past 13 weeks with outflows, so it's going to be tough to break out of that cycle. Clearly, investors are not uh, too uh, excited about domestic equity funds, although the rest of the world doesn't look too much better than the U.S. right now. Domestic equity funds still saw outflows of about $2.2 billion dollars non-domestic equities actually had inflows. They scraped together about $1.3 billion in net inflows. When it comes to sector uh, uh, outflows, real estate uh, did not fare so well. They had net outflows of about $140 million. And on the alternative side, the best performer there was all our Alternative Managed Futures Group, which had net inflows of about $114 million. So it looks like investors are still trying to diversify their portfolios taking money out of the large and multi-caps and putting it into some of the places that may uh, have a little lower correlation with the rest of the market. So maybe more of a defensive play on their part. Well, let's turn our attention now to equity ETFs. They, on the other hand, had inflows. About $7.8 billion this week was pretty good. A rather risk-neutral allocation, though. SPY ended up as a week's top uh, gainer for, with about $3 billion in inflows. IWM, not too far behind, $1.2 billion in IA, IJH, the mid-cap product, with inflows of about $788 million. At the bottom, though, uh, Deutsche X Tracker's Harvest CSI 300A shares uh, had outflows this week of about uh, $278 million. Again, this has to do, I think, with uh, China's uh, stock market looking a little overheated right now, and ETF investors are starting to pull back from that allocation. Uh, EEM, the Emerging Markets product, had outflows of about $342 million. And at the very bottom, IVV, outflows of about uh, 300, I'm sorry, $497 million. So a few reasons for investors to get excited about equities and a few reasons for them to get uh, a little fearful. So we saw mixed emotion out there this week among ETF investors. Well, let's turn our attention now to taxable mutual funds. They again had outflows. $3.4 billion this week was pretty good. Uh, even though the Treasury rallied from last flows week to this week from about 250 basis points on the 10-year to about 239 we still couldn't get a whole lot of activity into Treasury-related ETFs. In fact, investors were probably more concerned with what's going on in Greece and China. They pulled out on high-yield funds about $1.2 billion, a pretty good amount there. Uh, on the other hand, they did feel a little bit more um, positive on core and core plus bond funds. Again, these are the mutual funds we're talking about. Core had about $314 million in inflows. Core plus about $271 million. At the other end with high yield, which you know certainly with $1.2 billion in outflows was the hardest hit, loan funds again struggled to find any new friends this week with outflows of $234 million. Well, if we turn our attention to fixed income ETFs, we get kind of a similar story here. 
Again, outflows of this uh, from this group, $1.8 billion. They've had four straight weeks of outflows, so it looks kind of like the mutual fund investor uh, data as well. Not too many places had inflows when we're looking at individual uh, groups and funds as well on the ETF side. About $89 million came into the U.S. dollar bull product, uh, the uh, aggress I'm sorry, the aggregate uh, core bond product, AGG. Light inflows, only $75 million this week. That's very low for a product that's so, uh, so influential in that uh, arena. Overall, when we're looking at groups, uh, short-term treasury products had outflows about $294 million. Short-term corporates managed to post some inflows this week, about $113 million. And much like their mutual fund cousins, high-yield ETFs also saw pretty good outflows this week, about $1.3 billion yanked from them. Well, the next group we'll take a look at now is municipal debt funds, and these uh, mutual fund products had outflows once again. This is the seventh week of outflows for the muni debt group. Um, even though the market bounced back in treasuries and we got about uh, 26 basis points into the black for municipal debt funds this week, there's still a bit of a malaise when it comes to investor sentiment. They're just not convinced that uh, a municipal debt fund rally is around the corner. So they, again, took out over $400 million. Uh, high yield muni led the outflow parade, about $161 million pulled from them. National munis really didn't do so well. There's lots of classifications represented here. They had outflows in total of $370 million. So it's a tough time to convince investors to stay with their municipal debt fund products. The final group to look at is money market funds. They also had outflows, $10.8 billion yanked from their coffers this week. We saw retail uh, investors actually put about $1.9 billion back into their cash products. Institutional investors were of a vastly different opinion. They pulled about $12.6 billion from uh, products suited to them. So no real direction here for uh, money market funds and the, the size of this uh, outflow uh, was nothing to be concerned about. It's pretty typical for this group. Well, that'll do it for our review of mutual fund and ETF flows this week. Join us online at Lipper US Fund Flows to catch the latest in uh, what's going on with the flows uh, trajectories out there, or join us here next week to get another analyst view of the same market. Thanks for watching.